Hi everyone, good to see you. Um, hopefully I can prove today that we are not obsolete as an industry. At least I try to. Um, creating products that people love, that is kind of the main topic here today. Um, there are a lot of discussions going on. And personally, that's what I'm taking care of or spending my time on at Audi, creating digital products that have a value and become magnetic to people so that they like to use them. And I've been here last year, and my talk was about the extra hour. So the extra hour, we use this term basically to um, yeah, frame our activities around piloted driving, autonomous driving. And uh, you see in this term already that it's not about the technology, it's more about the freedom we give the people. Because on average, um, in the Western world, people spend one hour per day in a car. And today, they still have to operate the car in the future. Hopefully, it drives them along and they'll win an extra hour they can spend on something different. So, and today, I'd like to dive a bit more into this extra hour, but don't worry, I'll be quick. I'll not take an hour away because I think it's almost lunchtime. Um, but I'll try to explain you a little bit more what we are thinking about, how we can use this hour and make it valuable for the passengers. And, of course, it's all about the new driving experience or the next driving experience, because what happens if people do not operate a car anymore, they don't experience the great driving uh, experience they have in their cars today. So, we have to find something new, and this is basically what I'd like to share with you today. Um, we have prototypes out there. Um, last year, I showed you a video of our um, RS7 concept car called Bobby. He was racing around racetracks, and you could be a passenger in this. I personally did this. It's amazing. It's like a roller coaster ride. It's very fascinating, but it's still the concept of a car like it is today. It's not the car how it will look like in the future, because if they drive fully auto autonomously, the design of the cars will change, mobility concepts will change, and also, yeah, it's not about having the best car, it's about having the people. As a brand, you need to engage with the people, and it's not so much about the products anymore. And there's a technology rising. Um, I love this slide. <laughs> because virtual reality is pretty hyped at the moment. But there are estimations out there that um, virtual reality, the market, in less than 10 years, will be a $110 billion market per year. And uh, this is just the hardware. Goldman Sachs in the study didn't talk about the software. So there was an estimation that this will add another 70 billion to this market size. Just to give you a feeling, 110 billion US dollars per year is larger than the TV market. And um, I think the market can be even bigger if you combine virtual reality with our idea of mobility. And I'll explain you why, but before I'd like to share um, a quick definition with you, because there's always so much talk about virtual reality, augmented reality. Basically, we look at all different um, areas or dimensions. You have augmented reality, information layers or Pokemon characters above the real world. Then you have mixed reality, that's basically yeah, interacting with virtual objects in the real world, so it's uh, even more engaging. And then you have the very immersive experience where you're absolutely excluded from the outside uh, with virtual reality. But uh, I think in the first talk this morning, you've learned about a different concept as well. We call this augmented virtuality, or like the void, the US startup calls it hyper-reality. It's adding real objectives, uh, real elements to the virtual world and makes it much more, much more exciting and much more real. So you can touch objects, you, can, you feel the wind blowing somewhere, you feel the heat in this experience. And um, I brought you a quick video of the void. Basically, you move freely around in this, in this uh, physical environment and the virtual environment is mapped above this and the experience is just, just amazing. Um, also, I had the chance to try their prototype there based in Salt Lake City. It was just the most amazing ex virtual reality experience I had so far. But there are other, co other concepts out there. For example, 
uh, this roller coaster ride. And you feel the physical movement of the roller coaster, but you're in a totally different world. There's, that creates so much tension. And looking at these two different concepts, bringing tactile elements to virtual worlds and also the physical movements, um, yeah, basically brings us to the, the idea that this could be something in the future if our cars move autonomously. Because you're in a very, very private space in this car, and that's important. I think you experienced it yourself if you have the VR glasses on, you're a bit afraid what happens outside if people are watching, laughing at you. It's, it looks a bit weird. So in the car, you still have the privacy. But you can also add virtual windows and so on, and you can create totally new experiences. Because the context comes into play, the place where you move with your car. And I put down this uh, four E's as an example. For example, you can create experiences that are all about education. You, you drive along with your car, let's say, across Hamburg, and you want to experience the city in the 15th century. So you just start the program and you move through the city and experience the city in a totally different way. So context comes into play, dynamics come into play. You can use this for education. Of course, you can play games and um, have new formats of films that take the, the environment into consideration where you're moving or the dynamics, how fast you move. It creates new experiences. You can use it for enterprise like or enterprise solutions like... Um, for example, conference calls and meetings, that's the boring stuff, but also new commerce, um, commerce applications can arise from this. You can travel to different places while you um, in this car moving. So there are many, many thoughts how virtual reality and autonomous cars can come together and create a whole new experience. And to exaggerate a little bit, maybe it's from the shift from driving experiences that we all experience today, more to experience driving. So maybe in the future we don't sell driving experiences more uh, anymore, we sell experience driving. And um, yeah, Brian Solis had a great quote out there. He said, it doesn't matter that AR and VR is right around the corner, it's what you're going to do within those environments that are going to be fantastic, fantastic, experiential and game-changing. And Brian, I'm very much looking forward to your talk in a couple of minutes, but I think that makes pretty clear, even though our claim is Vorsprung durch Technik, um, for us it's all about the experience and what you do with this technology and how it can benefit the people. So hopefully we won't come obsolete. Um, if you look at three different areas, IoT, connected car, artificial intelligence for autonomous driving and VR technology coming um, together, um, we, we think about something, a new category, saying virtual mobility. Because if these things come together, maybe one day physically driving from A to B becomes obsolete and you create whole new experiences. And it's just about the new meaning you create um, in, in this field of mobility that is basically just virtually one day or could be, um, just to, to sparkle some new ideas. And of course, uh, new businesses will arise from this. Still, it sounds like science fiction, and it's still far away the road, or it might come differently. But still, it's important for car manufacturers to look at all these areas. And with piloted driving, we have a technology at hand that is quite, uh, quite exciting. Um, connected cars, at, or the connected environment, adds a lot of value, and adding VR to it, we might see a new and different category called VR, uh, V-mobility, sorry. Um, but VR for Audi is no science fiction anymore. We are currently starting rolling out um, um, VR glasses to our dealerships that they can, uh, together with their customers, configure cars and experience the cars in a more or less real environment, how they will look like at the end. You can sit there, look at the interior, but our advanced setup also allows you that you walk virtually, walk around the car, standing right in front of you. You can change the colors, you can change the rims, everything thing so that the customer can see his dream, dream Audi even before he orders it. And um, we also defined a new credo at Audi. Everyone knows mobile first, but in our content production we shift towards VR first. 
what does this mean? We create dynamic environments, 3D environments, where you can freely move. Or you can make an extract from this and just have a static VR experience. But once you set up all these environments, all these different stages, you can derive all the different media from this. 360 videos, 3D videos, films, and even a simple picture. And uh, to give you a little bit more insight how this looks like, um, I mean, this conference is, uh, is called Next. So I brought you a little world premiere. It's not a car. It's our um, first glimpse on one of the experiences we are planning right now. And please have a look. For Audi, virtual reality is very real. We're ready to use this technology to profoundly enrich our sales process by taking people on a journey to the universe of options and giving them the opportunity to explore what we build for them. Today, it's at the dealer, at Audi locations, at events, and people seem to like it. Okay. But what's beyond configuration? What's next? We think about thrilling virtual experiences that really get you. These experiences will work like entries to connect deeply to the world of Audi. First level, Audi Sport. This is the scenery of the world's most famous endurance race, Le Mans. Users can move freely all over the place and explore whatever they like. Say hello to the drivers. Have a look at the crew. And of course, you can inspect the race car before you configure your own. But for us, this is just the warm-up. At the next lap, we'll bring even more reality to virtual reality. So basically, our team went to Le Mans, filmed um, the different, or captured the different um, sceneries, and uh, the car, of course, and also our crew. And we created this experience that you can basically yeah, walk into the, um, the pit lane, you can look at the car, you can see how the crew is changing the tires, how the drivers change, and you can walk around freely. You can even look into the car. And um, yeah, two of my colleagues worked um, quite hard to make it ready for today or have the prototype ready for today. So thanks, Marcus and Thomas. Um, they spent a lot of... Uh, time working on this and we build up this prototype for you at the NEO so um, from now on you can try this yourself and please don't be shy the car isn't real it's still virtual but go there have a look um, go close to the car close to the driver and experience this yourself because it, it's just an amazing experience and for us this is one of the cinematics we are doing in the virtual reality environment to to really get some excitement before the configuration process starts so even today we are working a lot on virtual reality and in the future we might see something like v mobility and I'm happy to share your thoughts on this and your ideas, and please give me some feedback how you experienced the prototype as well. So thank you very much.